Our statewide approach, uh, compared to other states, we've saved you know, maybe 15, 17,000 lives by having a statewide approach and having, frankly, a state willing to make hard decisions. Well, after much anticipation, Spokane County will be staying in phase three. Today, Governor Jay Inslee announced a two week pause on his reopening plan. This means right now all counties will stay in their current phase. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us on Crem Tuna's First at Four. I'm Tom Sherry. Welcome, everyone. I'm Whitney Ward. We want to get right to our political reporter, Casey Decker, who has details tonight about why Jay Inslee said he made this decision and really what it is going to mean for Spokane County and other areas. Casey? Well, Whitney, Tom, for weeks now we've been talking about how bad our numbers are here in Spokane and how they're not good enough to meet the metric goals the governor set for reopening. With our numbers, we were expecting to be sent back to phase two this week, but Inslee changing up the plan yet again. What he's essentially done, like you mentioned, is put a pause on these county evaluations. The state will hold off for two more weeks before actually sending any counties forward or backward. The governor said this is because even though we are in the midst of a fourth wave, that wave is now peaking, plateauing, so basically we don't expect it to get worse from here. And furthermore, he said this wave is actually less deadly than past waves thanks to the vaccine. So he believes the best course of action here is to hold off on any phase changes another two weeks and to continue vaccinating people. And we're pleased that we made priority decisions on who would receive the vaccinations first in a way that has dramatically driven down the death rate because those who are most vulnerable receive the vaccine first. And if we can pause and prevent some disruption of our economy, we think that this is a reasonable step to take. Is it certain to work? No, there's no certainty in this pandemic, but we think it's a reasonable step. Meanwhile, Spokane's health officer, Dr. Frank Velasquez, said he appreciates Inslee's decision. He says the two weeks will give Spokane time to distribute more vaccine, to double down on compliance with other protocols, and to get a better sense of just where we're trending. He's hopeful we can remain in phase three after this pause, but says it's a long way from a sure thing. I think it's still difficult to predict, uh, particularly because the numbers are changing on a daily basis. If we do continue the trend that we have, um, I think our chances will be a lot better. Two weeks is, um, is a good period of time, but sometimes it's not long enough for trends to uh, go in a different direction. Hopefully these two weeks will make a significant difference. I do believe that just when we look at the progress we've made in immunizations, if we continue moving forward, particularly with our younger generations, we should see the benefits of that over the next few weeks. Now, Inslee also reiterated today that local health officers still, of course, have the power to implement their own restrictions or move their own jurisdictions back in phases. We've seen that recently in Ferry County, but Dr. Velasquez says he's not considering doing that here in Spokane right now. He says that he would consider more restrictions if the region's healthcare system became overwhelmed and that he's monitoring that data closely. But again, for now, bottom line here, Spokane dodging a bullet, remaining in phase three for at least two more weeks. Whitney, Tom. Mm. All right, Casey, wow. thank you very much. So all Washington counties remain in their current phase. It is good yeah. news, especially for small businesses. Very welcome news in Spokane, which was failing both metrics in order to even stay in phase two. So today we are joined by Mayor Nadine Woodward. So Mayor, what was your your reaction to hearing the news that Spokane, Spokane County, at least for now, is going to be staying in phase three after there was so much talk about potentially moving backwards. Very encouraged, Tom and Whitney. Thanks for having me on your show today. I've been in conversations with the governor's staff for the last two weeks. In fact, the last phone call I had with um, the staff was on Friday. Uh, Dr. Frank Velasquez our public health officer uh, joined me on that call asking the governor to pause. Uh, we had asked for three weeks to, to get more shots in arms and to really concentrate on vaccinating more of our community. I mean, our, our eligibility had broadened just two, a little more than two weeks ago. That's really not enough time um, to make the, the kind of difference that we need to make in the community. And really, you, you wait 14 days after your first dose before you even start seeing some kind of protection. So we need more time to really concentrate on vaccinating our community, especially the younger adults uh, under the age of 40 who are um, getting more uh, infected. We're seeing more cases 
uh, among that age group. Yeah. Mayor, we know that there is a pretty large contingent of people who just don't really want to get vaccinated. They're passing so far mm -hmm. on all the opportunities to get vaccinated. So have there been talks uh, with your team, with county leaders to try to incentivize people to get vaccinated? Or what is the plan to try to reach that group of people? Yeah, we're looking at things that we can do right now with downtown businesses, some type of incentives with maybe some of the uh, breweries or the restaurants, um, some discounts. We had um, just a week and a half ago an event with the hospitality industry with food trucks to incentivize people to turn out. And a lot of those employees are in that younger demographic. I think what we need to do is compel young people um, that if they want to be social, continue uh, with their social lives and, and get back to some sense of normalcy and do the kinds of activities and events that they crave, going to concerts. Um, even at the high school level, having a high school graduation ceremony this year, we're working with the school district to do that at our pavilion in Riverfront Park. But all of those things could possibly be taken away again uh, if we don't get more of our community vaccinated. So that kind of goes along with my next question. Uh, we've got Mother's Day weekend coming up, potentially large gathering. Of course, you just mentioned graduation. So uh, what's your message ahead of these two potentially large gathering events? Well, and we also came off just a few weeks ago, NCAA um, spring break and a lot of gatherings. So we came off of a big, big two week period of people being in, in large gatherings. But again, I would say get vaccinated because anyone over 16 is now eligible, but also continue to, to follow a lot of that, you know, guidance of masking and social distancing, not having those big gatherings, but take it outside because that's where we know that people can gather uh, and be safe and, and protect the community and, and do some of the things that we want to do. The weather's great. Take it outside. Mm. Mayor Woodward, thank you very much. We, uh, we certainly appreciate your time. And of course, as always, your expertise and your insight on mm -hmm. this situation. The main takeaway of tonight, of course, being that this is not a free pass, that no. we have two weeks, a very limited time window to try to make some changes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And the governor listens. So we're very thankful yeah. to be able to have those conversations and to keep that dialogue going. Thank you, Mayor. We appreciate your time. Uh, interesting to hear about uh, the maybe the incentive with mm -hmm. the local breweries, right? So that would bring a new version of have a shot and a beer. There you go. <laughs> Whatever it takes. <laughs> Whatever Whatever's going to work. Takes. That's right. To move us along to where we need to be. Well, Spokane businesses are breathing a sigh of relief today after learning Spokane will remain in phase three, especially with Mother's Day this weekend. Many business owners are glad that they just can keep their doors open. Some say they were very anxious just at the thought of Spokane County possibly rolling back to phase two. This made planning for Mother's Day weekend a bit challenging, but restaurants like the Max at Mirabu and Chaps are now going full steam ahead to prepare for the holiday weekend. Uh, we're definitely pleased that we're not uh, going backwards. So yes, I mean, I have a lot of folks that are that are ready to work to like, like to bring folks back to work uh, if I can, uh, but uh, definitely it's a good thing to uh, see happening. I think for all businesses, this is such an important weekend and I, I think that we're going to see Spokane come out in support of it. Well, if you remember this time last year, restaurants and businesses were shut down in Washington. So this is just another reason why many businesses are looking forward to stay open to serve guests for at least the next two weeks. Also today, the president and CEO of the Washington Hospitality Association praised the governor's decision. Anthony Antone released a statement saying in part, we appreciate that the governor announced a pause on further rollbacks, which recognizes the sacrifices we have all made to keep each other safe. He said we are eager to move beyond rollback only approach and create a real path forward for his full statement. You can also just go to our website, krem.com. In the meantime, we want to take a quick pause on the COVID <laughs> headlines. And let's talk about this because when Gosh. I woke up this morning, it was cloudy, it yep. was cool, but it's turning into a pretty nice evening. It certainly has, and we're tracking temperatures uh, tomorrow in the 70s. Take a look at this. We'll show you the weather headlines around the region. I've got temps climbing into the 70s, as I mentioned, not only on Wednesday, but Thursday as well. And then we'll look for rain to develop Thursday night, which could lead to thunderstorms on Friday. It's also going to become very windy for uh, Friday into Saturday as we get much cooler air moving in uh, Friday into the weekend. 
weekend. Right now we've got some showers up along the uh, pretty much Idaho and Canadian border. As you can see, more numerous showers over in western Montana. But gosh, just as, Nate, uh, as uh, uh, Whitney mentioned, it is very, very comfortable outside. 66 degrees. You've got wind out of the west at 13 miles per hour. We'll look for mostly clear skies tonight with a low of 40, 72. My gosh, expected tomorrow. Average high this time of year is 63. And then for the weekend, again, it's going to be a chance of showers on Saturday. Much cooler, windier. We'll get to up to 63 on Sunday. I'll check the rest of your seven day forecast all coming up in a few minutes. Not bad at all, Tom. Mm -hmm. Thanks very much. And here's something else to kind of appreciate for today. It is opening day for Spokane Indians baseball today. The first time since 2019 the fans can be back there inside of Vista Stadium. So up next, we're live with Sports Director Brenna Green on what has changed this year.